first, I am going to be trying my first ever nasi goreng. Not sure about the concept of having fried rice for breakfast, but let's see how it goes. Also, good, good morning. morning. Good morning. Good morning for real this time. We are starting our day at lunchtime, to be honest with you, by climbing Penang Hill, which I believe actually takes us to the highest point on the island. There is a cable car that goes up. However, being the cheap and active people that we are, we've decided to hike up on the Heritage Trail. officially made it to the midway point after I want to say maybe half an hour is worth of hiking. It is all uphill and all steep. The stairs are of varying sizes and we're both completely drenched. Yeah, we had a look on hiking trails before we started this and it said that out of the trails that were available in Penang Hill, this was the only one that was rated easy. So one, that's utter BS. And two, if that's considered easy, I'd hate to think how hard the other ones are. How much do you hate me right now? A little bit. But we can't give up. I hate everybody who makes me go on a hike though. So, you know, that's not really much of a yardstick. The only option is onwards and upwards. So... Is it? There's a train right there. No, that's the old one. It's stationary there. Uh, the actual, like, tracks are on the other side of it. Oh, I guess we could walk across the bridge. But no, we shall not give up. We will persevere. Why? I will persevere. Nick may take the train up. I don't know. We're so close. I serve as living proof that behind every successful woman there is a man sweating profusely and struggling to keep up. And after what has felt like an absolute eternity, we have finally made it to the top. Team Dub Dubs for the win! It took us an elevation of 833 meters to get to the top of what they call a hill, but 100% feels like a mountain. But I'm sure you can agree, the view from here is pretty nice. And if you're wondering what Team Dub Dubs is about, it's our newest inside joke. Basically, we were contacted by Memphis Voyager magazine, and they did an article featuring us, which was shocking and so kind of them we're really appreciative but basically they asked what our name is and we said nick and rachel w because both of our surnames start with the letter w and ever since then we realized that we're double w hence dub dubs team dub dubs we did not bring food on this hike, which we probably should have done. However, we did find a little stall that was selling chickpea masala, and they make it fresh for you. It smells so good. And I feel like we have earned this food after almost 10,000 steps and 1,700 calories burned today. So, ready for this. Mm. That has some nice crunch to it. 
because there's some kind of like dried noodley stuff in it. There's some dried peas, some onion, good spice to it. Love that there's protein and carbs and fat. This is gonna hit the spot. How much did it cost, babe? I got a small one. Nick got a large container and we got a bottle of water all for 20 ring it so 550 maybe we've officially started our walk back down and i'm anticipating that it's going to be a lot faster and easier there is a temple around this area but it does shut within the next couple of hours so let's hope that we can make quick work of this and if we don't make it there today we can still go tomorrow morning yeah. So it's not the end of the world, but because it's in this area, we're hoping we can do it this afternoon. Otherwise, it means another set of taxi fares tomorrow. Let's see what happens, I guess. And you know us, we like to save money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somehow it's taken us an hour to get down. It did feel easier on one hand, yet we are still sweating an insane amount again. And because of the effort to go downhill, then all four of our legs are shaking. Yeah, I have no idea how our knees are gonna feel tomorrow. Oh, mine are gonna be screwed. It'll be a real indicator of how old we're getting. We're definitely gonna cut our losses and go to the temple tomorrow just because we don't wanna be rushed. We wanna be able to enjoy it and not have to worry about leaving before they close. So for now, I think we're just gonna try and figure out what we wanna do by way of next steps and food, and then just go from there. soy sauce, pickled radish, chives, bean sprouts, that's the base recipe and then on top of that if you want to throw an egg there then you can do that too. We've opted for a duck egg because apparently it's richer and nicer so we're gonna give this a try. The beauty of this is it tastes so fresh and the soy itself also just puts in such a big flavour. Honestly, and it's this it's seasoned perfectly, it's got a little bit of a kick underneath because we asked for it to be a bit spicy. It's quite pretty nice. The final dish that we're having is called curry mei. It's kind of similar to the laksa that we had yesterday. It seems to have two different types of noodles in here, one thinner and one thicker. It has shrimp. It has egg, bean sprouts, chili, and then I believe these are like rice flour balls. I'm excited to try it. Just so you know, we've basically had a three course meal for 31 ringgit, which is well under 10 Canadian dollars. Oh, I think there's also oysters in here too. It tastes so similar, but it seems more authentic. I finally feel like we got the Malaysian street food experience that we had been looking for. That was honestly so good and just the sort of authentic experience that 
we think that anybody who's coming to Malaysia should get. If you are in any Malaysian city, look out specifically for a hawker center or hawker food or anything like that. Come in the evening because that's the only time that they're going to be open. Enjoy your dinner and thank us later. As for us, I think we're going to continue this in the morning. So we'll see you then. Good morning. We are about to check out from our hotel in Penang, but we still have a full day ahead of us here. So we're just going to go store our luggage and find some breakfast. You may be wondering why we have another cup of coffee, but it's because we wanted to make a comparison from the first one, which was Penang white coffee, to this, which is Kopi C, which is the coffee with a condensed milk. This Kopi C is definitely less sweet and less creamy than the Penang white coffee, which is very, very rich. This is much more of a traditional coffee taste and flavor. Promised we are back in the Air Etam suburb of Georgetown to come back to the very temple that we had hoped to come to yesterday. So we have come to Kek Loksi Temple, which is the largest Buddhist temple in the whole of Malaysia. was built over a 40 year period from 1890 to 1930. And it is vast. It's absolutely gorgeous. If anything, it's one of those times where we wish we could have a proper tour guide. Not least because there is so much to take in here and so much that we would love to understand more about. But also when we went into that first temple, it looked like they were setting up for some kind of event and we would love to know exactly what that's all about as well. If you happen to know though, please drop us a comment. We'd love to figure this out. I Googled it and I couldn't find any Buddhist festival taking place on September 3rd, but it was definitely something. So very curious to find out. Any explanation is welcome. taken a funicular up to see the huge 120 foot bronze statue of Guan Yin or Guan Yin seems to go by both names who is the goddess of mercy and this ginormous statue is one of the iconic features here at this temple complex. The cable car cost 12 ringgit total for both of us to go up and down. So what does that work out to be? Like under four Canadian dollars, I think? 
Apparently there is a way you can walk up here, but it involves exiting the temple complex, walking to the parking lot, coming up here, and we're not done with the rest of the temple complex, so we figured it was best to just pay the money and stay within the area. Uh, plus with our exploits yesterday, then our legs are pretty short. So the prospect of doing another decent sized walk up here just didn't sound very appealing. still at the top of the temple complex and one thing that I've noticed just outside of this pagoda is that there are a bunch of different animal statues and actually it turns out that each of these is a sign of the Chinese zodiac. What we just saw was the ox, we've got the tiger here, rabbit, dragon, snake and so on and so on and so on. So I thought that was pretty cool. One thing they maybe thought we wouldn't notice yeah. though is that there's also statues of Disney characters? is the other main attraction to this temple complex, which is the Pagoda of 10,000 Buddhas. The reason for that is because apparently inside there are 10,000 different Buddha statues made of both alabaster and bronze. The bottom layer is Chinese, the middle layer is Thai, and on the top is Burmese. a seven story climb up to the top of this awesome pagoda, then I think that's pretty much it for this temple complex. Yeah, what did you think of it? I thought it was really cool, really cool. I mean, we've slowly been introduced to Buddhist temple since we've been here and all of that's been really interesting, but to see it all on such a large scale when so much work clearly has been put into it was really cool. Major highlights have been obviously this pagoda as well. It's been beautiful. That temple that we first went into was really cool. But the main standout is right at the top of that hill over there. That statue is magnificent. Yeah, she is beautiful. And I don't really think that the sheer scale was captured on camera probably, but she's gorgeous. This whole temple complex exceeded my expectations. I didn't realize how large it was going to be, even though I knew it was the largest Buddhist temple in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. I just love that we got to see so many different pagodas, different temples, different Buddha statues. The colors, again, are so vibrant. And I love the way that they incorporate lotus flowers here. I think that they are absolutely beautiful. So in my mind, it's worth it to come here and take your time exploring this whole temple complex. I'm really glad we didn't come yesterday. We would have had 45 minutes and that is just not enough. I think we've spent the best part of two hours here, but it was just worth it to explore every nook and cranny. You could do this for free, but then you cannot come up this pagoda. You could go up to the statue for free if you walked up. To come up this pagoda, it was another four ringgit total, so just over one Canadian dollar. Overall, for the amount of time that you can spend here and what you're able to see, I mean, we spent a total of 16 
ring it, which is just over four Canadian dollars. And I mean, that's really nothing for this type of tourist attraction. No, it's peanuts. And what you get in return is just so worth it. And that wraps up this part of Malaysia. So we're going to call this video here. Yeah. So until the next time, take care. And keep smiling.